Hello again, and thank you for stopping by. This is part three on how to begin a Zendella. Um, we are working on this, uh, it's a large tile, um, it's a piece of paper, but this is going into a frame and I am reconstructing it piece by piece, section by section on a it's a large tile. It's a seven by seven square that I cut out to fit a frame. And if you're only interested in doing the, the Zendella portion, I am doing that alongside. I'll do this and then I, I repeat it on here. So that is where we are. And again, this is part three. So if you're not caught up to where we are, um, please go back to part one and you'll you'll catch up with with the first two tangles and if you just want to learn huggins i'm glad you're here so with that um with that i'm going to demonstrate huggins first on a tile to to just learn the tangle in case you're not familiar with it and once we're done with that we will go to the larger tile and we'll put in this section here what's called Crazy Huggins. And then we will proceed to fill it in on the, the Zendella if you're just working on that instead of this. So it should be fun. Let's get started. Huggins is one of those tangles that looks complex. And when you break it down, it's really not, it's very easy to do. So I'm just gonna begin with our border. Again, not caring about if the lines are straight or not. You just want the basics. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is create a circle, step over a bit, Create another circle, step over. Now this is gonna be a large Huggins, but that's okay, I want you to see how it's done. Another circle, okay. And it doesn't have to be even, but I'm keeping it even just for this example. We wanna take these circles in line down our tile. Over here, so I'm evening it up. Just keep making those circles. trying to keep them the same size, but it's not the end of the world. Okay, let's stop there. We're going to begin at this circle and we're basically making parentheses around these two lines. So let's just start here, take off and go around the next one. That's it. Okay, start at this one, take off and go around the next one. So you have a set of parentheses. Now, when you go down to your next set, it's actually going to be opposite. So you start, take off, and you make them going this way, outside of the circle. Pretty easy. Okay, again, this is the next section. Let's go down and make the parentheses. And that's inside of those circles. And then the last group will be outside of the circles. Easy as that. Okay, now on this side, I want to do the opposite. Whatever's over here, I'm gonna do over here. 
So I'm gonna do just one group at a time to keep it easy, one row down at a time. So now this section that mirrors this one, this one mirrors that one, this one mirrors this one. It's just reversed. This one mirrors the last one. Now we have another set. So let's do the final, final row. We're making a reflection of this other side. So I want to come around and go in. That one got a little off the circle. And this one is going to mirror. So I want to take off, go down, come around. And this one is mirroring the opposite one. And lastly, this one. So you should have something that looks like that. Okay, now we're going to connect them and you'll see how easy this is. Okay, so now to connect them, very easy to do. Wherever there's open spaces between these two circles, we're gonna connect. So on this one, see how these are going in? I want to curve around and go around. And again, I'm gonna mirror that. Go around this circle. And I'm gonna mirror this one. Do the exact opposite. Come around here. Likewise, when we go down here, we're gonna mirror this one. So we would go around. But wh however you look at it, you're making parentheses, just in opposite directions. Okay, and this one, I'm going to mirror as well, which would go this way. So it's a high concentration tangle and hard to talk to <laughs> talk through in two. <laughs> but it is really easy if you just can think about this alone. It's really easy to do. All right, let's do our next group. Okay, um, let's do, this one is going to go under and we're gonna mirror it go around. Now we're going to mirror this one. So we need to go around this way. We're going to mirror this one so it's coming up and around. And again, if you lose track, I always look at it and think, okay, I've got two parallel lines that need to be a parentheses. So if I can't look at it this way and my mind can't figure it out, I'll turn it this way so I get a handle on it again so I can see the parentheses and wherever that circle is I'm just gonna aim my line for it okay let's mirror this one come around and do it again and see the parentheses and they're folding into each other okay our last group I know that this one is going to look like the one over here, not this one. So I'm gonna go around this way. And same thing, go ahead and mirror it. Okay, now this line is going to go this way. So again, you turn it to the side and these are your parentheses you turn it to the side and these are your parentheses. So if you get confused doing it with the mirroring effect, just again, reorient yourself by looking at where your parentheses are. Okay, so this one, I wanna come around this way. I can also reference the previous one and know I have to do the opposite. And this one is going to go around this way. Okay, so there's your basic 
your basic shape. Now we're going to darken and deepen that. All right, blue's panting in the background. All right, you can stay with your 0.05 if you want, or you can move to your one. What we're going to do is we're going to make these circles darker and give them some depth. So that's our next step. I'm using the one so it goes a little bit quicker. can be deeper and a little bit bigger if you want. There's no rule on how big this has to be. Okay, first I want to come in and show you the effect when we shade of how drastically these change. And remember, when you do future Huggins, a future, is that right? When you do future Huggins, and when you use <laughs> when you use Huggins in other tangles, you can fool around with making these skinnier, um, all kinds of variations. But this is just the basics. So I'm just shading where I would envision these are going under, just right underneath here. And I'll just keep going with that until we reach the end. Again, I'm mirroring what I see on the other side for now. So this is mirroring this one. And this one is going to mirror over here. And this one is going to mirror over here. This one over here. Okay, so do we have them all? I tend to miss a few when I'm talking. Okay, now when you blend this out, you want to start at the dark edge and just pull that graphite up so it gets lighter and it, it raises the middle for a highlight. Again, it looks really complex when you see it in a piece of work, but it's really not when you break it down. I find that true with a lot of things in drawing. You take it step by step, you take it line by line. Look how dramatically it changes and becomes 3D.
And if you've never seen Crazy Huggins before, that one is really fun. It's less structured and working more within a tangle, the perimeters of a tangle that you're working in. And this one really should have, um, I still have some graphite left over. This one should have one here and mirroring. It should have one here. See, I told you I would miss one while talking. Who am I kidding? I miss one when not talking. That's all right, you see them as you go back through the design. And that's the purpose of a focus, a high focus tangle, is it just kind of keeps your brain engaged. It keeps your brain engaged. Okay, so look how different that looks. Now, if we weight the lines, whereas we create more depth, we're gonna change the look even more. So if I weight the lines where these tangles are tucking under, there's an even more dramatic effect here and here and here. See the difference? And keep turning. I don't turn as much as I should when I'm filming. So I'm more conscious of what the camera sees than what I'm drawing. Okay, no, no worries. Went off there a bit. Okay. All right, now if you had other tangles, you could just go off. I could imagine all kinds of things coming out of these, even out of the middle. It's just, there's no end to what you can do, but that's the basics of Huggins. Now I'm gonna show you how to fold them and wrap them off the page. I'm gonna go back to my point five. Now this is where the parentheses trick comes in handy because you're, you don't necessarily have dots or circles that you're aiming for. I mean, you could, you could put, you could continue them on here and keep going. In fact, I'll do that for this row. I won't worry about necessarily making sure they're in an exact line. Okay. Now, again, when we look at this, if it's easier for you to look for where your parentheses should go, do it that way. So I know this one is going to come around here and here. And this one is going to come around here and here. And this one is mirroring this one, or it's doing the opposite of this one. So it's going to go this way. So I've got another set as easy as that. Now, let me make the parentheses mirror this one and mirror this one, mirror this one, parentheses, and mirror this one. Okay, so I've got another set. Now, to go off the page, I don't have to put a circle I just look at, okay, what's happening here? I've got parentheses, parentheses. I need a parentheses here. So I'm gonna take my pen 
and go around and just go off the page. Around and off the page. And this one is going to mirror this one. Go off the page. Off. Okay. You'll see how it comes together when we shade. All right. If I ever get confused, again, I go back and I look for my parentheses. And that gives me another reference to start from. Or if the mirroring technique is better, I'll do that. Okay. Now, this one is turning a little. That's okay, because when we thicken the line, we can, we can work with that. Okay, now on this side, parentheses. Parentheses. They do not have to be the same length. It's whatever you decide to do. All right, so let's go back and let's just darken up the dots and thicken the lines of the ones that, that we just did. Okay, now before I darken anymore, I'm going to do some shading to help me keep reference to where I am. Okay, so to come back and shade, again, I'm looking for where these tuck under. That conveniently covers up my black line there. Here. Okay, and this one I've got to think about a little bit. Um, I would put another one in here and maybe I'll show you that because that's how we do crazy huggins because this one is a little bit too big. So leave that one alone for now. Let's just keep shading and tucking these in. And if you ever get confused where to shade, look at the one previously. It's going to be opposite. Or mirroring the other one. Okay, and here's our crazy one that I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Well, I do, but I haven't showed you. All right. Now let's shade those out and see where we go and we're going to we're going to add one in here, but I'll show you how that works. I see one I missed. I see a couple I missed. Thank you. 
let's do the blending. And when you're slow and taking your time, you can really just focus and the results will be dramatic. Okay, and this one would come around this way. So now we are ready to darken anything that she would like to give some more weight to. So you kind of get the idea. Now let's add one down here. I would just want to show you how that would work. Let's, let's put a circle in and really we don't have to line it up. We can do whatever we want to do, but let's just put a circle here. Okay. Now if we look at it, how would this next one fit? Well, we know that we've got a parentheses here. We know that we want to mirror this one. So this one is going to go this way and off the page. And then the next one would be the parentheses. And again, this one, sorry, my jewelry hits this, but the next one would go around this way and this one would come around this way. So it just kind of gently folds around. So let's go ahead and darken those again. And let's see, we're gonna mirror this one, which means this one would get darker here. And I want to darken this dot 
this circle. And I could weight the line too. And this one, the, whoops, <laughs> can't talk and do this. Okay, and this one would come off over here, so it's not showing up. All right, there you go. That is basic Huggins. So what we're gonna do is take it one step further and smaller, and we're going to take the principles of what we learned in Huggins, put them in this tangle, and we're gonna call it Crazy Huggins, which is in Tangle's Tangle, and I'll show you how to fit those in. But keep these principles in mind because we're not really working straight. We're gonna just randomly put our circles and wrap those lines around them. It's very easy, sounds complicated, but it's not. You can see a the variation that I did. The only thing I did different was in the middle where I had room. I don't want my one. Where I had room was, what did I do? Oh yeah, I put a line like this, ordering this line, the parentheses. And then I put, um, kind of an hourglass shape or two triangles. They got really small, but that was just a sample. You could put hearts, you could put anything, dots. You could, you know, get crazy with these designs, color these in black. You're gonna get a whole nother look if you color these in black. You know, that would make this whole design extremely interesting. So for now, we're gonna move on to our project though, because I could go off for hours, as you can tell. All right. Okay, so once you understand the principle or the elements of Huggins, you can really make them fit into anything, just depending on how small you go. You just, we're gonna take this very large version and put it into a smaller space, or maybe you're working in a larger piece, which would make it easier. But because I'm working in a small space, I'm going to work with my O1. Now, I'm just gonna pick anywhere random to just start my crazy Huggins. That circle's a little too big, but it's okay. All right, so I've got two there and I'm gonna put another set. It really doesn't matter because these are gonna go twisty and curvy. Okay, so I want to start here, take off, land, take off, land. So I've got my first set. Now I know on this side, it's gonna go this way and this way. Now I'm making these a little larger than I made these for the camera because it would be, it would take a long time to make them this small and it's easier to see. So this is just to learn the concept of crazy Huggins and making them fit. Okay, I want another set of circles. And again, it doesn't matter where you place them. I can be off here. I can put one up here. And this one's gonna be parentheses around and I'm going to close it up by mirroring that one. And this one I can pretend that the circles are under the ribbon. So I'll just go off and I'll do the same with this one. And let's come over here. I can decide to put a circle here. And maybe this one comes off of the Zandela. So I'll do my parentheses. And this one, I'm gonna stop at the edge of my 
Zendela border. All right, and I can outline the circle too, which I should have done in the beginning. So I'm just gonna put the outline in so we know where we're working. Okay, let's go back over here. And let's see, I'll put one here, make a parentheses, and then that one is falling off of this side. And down here, I want it to get a little drastic. <laughs> She's always got to say something. Always. Okay. Now this one's going to be really wide, which is fine. It just makes it more interesting. You can color these circles in as you go too, if you want to. That's usually how I do mine. Okay, now this one, I I don't know because it's coming off this way. You really could go either way. It depends on how dramatic you want it to look. I'm going to leave it alone and just pretend it's tucking under the ribbon. And this one is going under the ribbon. I still have to remember this section. When I'm recording, I lose track of where I am. Okay, let's go back. Let's, let's work with this section. Um, this one, let's make it curve in a little bit. So make my parentheses, come around this way, and I'll darken these while I'm at it. Okay, now when you look at this, boy, that looks like a lot of space though, doesn't it? So you know what? I do want to add a circle here and then I'll decide how I want to do it. Okay. Number one, I know that I have to mirror this one. So I'm going to come around here and that way it's, it's tucking under. I'll just make this piece come out. So I've got a little bit of interest there. Okay. And going around, I've got two here. So maybe I'll make this one out here. And this one is a parentheses. So I know I've got to go opposite this way and opposite this way. Okay. Let's do a couple more. Parentheses or mirroring, whichever way is easier for you to look at it. Around this way. All right, and don't get confused looking at the whole thing. Just take it section by section. So I've got three here. So I'm gonna put a dot or a circle here. And I wanna mirror this one. So come around. And this one is gonna go this way. Now I could take it off the page or I could put another circle, which I think I'll do. around it and I'm going to put one here and that finishes off this one nicely. All right, we're almost there. Okay, so I've got two here and I want it to curve a little bit this way. So I'm going to start with this one. Now I know it's not a parentheses because this one is a parentheses, so I know I have to go this way. I'm mirroring 
this line. And this one, again, this one would be a parenthesis, so I'm going around here. Now, depending on where this dot is, that's where my next line is going to curve. But first, let's finish this one. Okay, this is a parenthesis or going this way. So it's going to stop at the line. Okay, now we can decide however we want to finish this off. I think I'm going to make this a skinnier one. So I'm going to put my, my circle here. And again, we're mirroring this line. We're making a parenthesis. And we're finishing it off however we want to. So this is a parenthesis. Again, same concept. And this one would have just a little bit of a tuck there. Okay, now I'm not going to forget this section. So I don't have to do a full four. I could do one here and one here. And I don't have anything to follow, so I'll just make it up. And then depending on what I have, I'll figure out where the lines should go. So I know that I've got a parenthesis here. So I need to go the opposite way here and the opposite way here. And over here, these dots would be underneath. So it just, it's fine. I would just leave it as is. So, okay. I always, let's see just want to highlight this line a little bit more. Okay, and be careful if you do have a section, realize that this is part of your last section. So yours is going to look different. So just keep track of your four sections and where the points are ending. So we've got bales, We've got Holly Ba, and now we've got Crazy Huggins. So let's go ahead and shade that. Now we're going to come in, and again, we're going to look for where these are tucking under. And I'm thinking about my ribbon, how it's going to go under there. And just take it piece by piece. Go slow. Pause this if you need to, and just look at it. Don't rush through. Just kind of take your time. Not kind of. I'm trying to get that word out of my vocabulary. I never realized how much I say it. Everything is kind of. It's ridiculous. Okay. And this one's going to tuck in here and it's coming out of the circle down here so I want that all shaded and this one shaded regardless okay and keeping that concept of mirroring in mind so if you get lost look at another line and figure out which way you're going and then it's easy. Again, I'm going to just shade around the border. And if you shade somewhere you don't like, you can always erase, of course, or leave it, and I guarantee no one will see it. I don't know if 
I want to shade those or not. So I'm going to leave that be right now. And this one would be over here. This one would be under. And it's also on the edge, so I'm just going to shade it. Alright, so let's blend them out and see what I missed. Just use the side of your blender and blend lightly because if you're working in a smaller space, you're going to cover your white up very quickly. If you're working bigger, all the better, which is a better way to start Zentangle. Zentangle is a method. It's not just copying tangles. There's a method behind each pattern. So again, when you're, when you're looking for tutorials on Zentangle, look for the certified teachers. The initials are C, Z, T. There's plenty of them online. But if you truly want to learn the method of Zentangle, look for the teachers. So many wonderful ones out there. All right. So I've got my basic crazy Huggins. And now we can weight the lines and decide if we want to do any further lines. Okay. Because I'm working small, I'm going to stay with my old five. And... Add some dimension and contrast by weighting or drawing over these lines, bringing back the black. And you can make the circles deeper if you want. Okay, we could stop it there. If you're happy with it, leave it be. I'm going to show you one other element in case you want to try something different and do a little bit of the design that I used on this one here. So let's just come in and I'm going to use my 01 and make outlines or ordering around my parentheses. This one's going to get really thin. It's okay.
following this line. So this one's going to go out this way. And this one, because I blacken that, it's a little hard to see, but I'll make it up. And tiny one. Okay, I think I got them all. Not on this side. I've got one more here, which is going to get really small. And this one's going to go out this way and this way. That's just detail. Alright, so again, you could stop there or add one more element, which is the hourglass or the two triangles that I drew on the first one. So that is all of those. And we have got Crazy Huggins. So let's move on and I will just do um, Crazy Huggins on the Zendella and I won't go so slow and walk you through it since I explained it here. But I do want to complete the Zendella for those of you who are doing that. Okay, again, this is for our Zendella only portion. So if you need to need instructions, um, I talk through extensively on the bigger tile that we're doing. So go back and refer to that. Otherwise, I will just put the crazy Huggins on here and we will be through part three. Thank you.
so there is how mine fit. Now this one was really small, so I could have made really tiny ones, but just decided to go with that one line. And we are ready to shade. Okay, I'm just going to shade these out and wait or darken the lines. Once you have learned how to construct Huggins using the principles of mirroring and tucking, wrapping around, and looking at the previous line, you can make it fit anywhere. It's not confusing. If you don't have those elements in mind, it's easy to lose track of where you are. But it's a great tangle and it can fit in any string you make. Now in this one, I'm not going to add the additional element of the um, ordering the perimeter and then adding the black dot. I just wanted to um, make sure that I included it on the Zendella as well. You know what I like a lot is the contrast now, how that stands out. I'm not sure in the light, it probably looks more gray, but there is a definite black. And when you take it away from the bright light, it's, it's dark, but there's a gray, a gray tone. It's very shimmery and I really like that. And when I lay it flat, it does look black. When I hold it up to the light, it goes silver. But I really, I love the effect of that acrylic glitter. All right, well, that takes us, all I have to do is weight the lines. That takes us to the end of part three. 
And if you're following along, thank you for watching all of these. I hope you're finding something new or a technique maybe you hadn't heard of yet. Doesn't matter who I watch, I always learn something new and I love that. Even if I wasn't sharing creativity, creativity is something I need as much as air. <laughs> there and if you want to keep adding weight to your lines go ahead and do that or if you see anything that needs touching up you can see why I broke these up because there's so much in each of these tangles that it's hard to condense I'm trying to keep it short but it's hard <laughs> so that's it for part three of our project. We've got three sections done, the tile and the zendella alone. And part four will be this section here, which we will be filling with a, another tangle. And then we'll move on to our ribbon. So that's it for part three. I hope you'll join me in part four and we will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, keep tangling. <laughs>